All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you guys. This is our eighth week of teaching relationship skills. So while we jump right into it, let's um, like the like the space. Let's retweet it out. Let's get some people in here so we have a more engaging conversation and I can teach more people. This space is recorded so you can always come back to it and um, listen to it at another time. That's good too. Um, we'll just give a little more time for people to come along and then we'll jump straight in. We're going to go through some relationship skills today and I'll introduce myself. I'm Kimia. I um, am all about relationships. I learned everything I could about it, read all the books, uh, got my master's in clinical behavioral psychology, specialized in relationships, um, wrote some papers in international journals for psychology, um, you know, I applied what I learned to my own life, which was, um, you know, finding the amazing husband in my life who'd been happily married for four years and did long distance for international long distance between Australia and the United States for five years. So we really built a strong foundation. So the last seven Twitter spaces we've had, we've had um, a bunch of different skills that we've worked on. So I'll do a quick recap. So we've worked on love languages, just noticing that two people can appreciate different things. And that's totally normal because we don't have someone that's exactly like us ourselves. Um, not bottling up our frustration. So bottling is bad. Being honest is good. Having st soft startups whenever we want to bring up something that we're frustrated about. Um, being direct when we are frustrated about something and saying what we want because we are very um, trained to kind of speak indirectly and soften the blow and it becomes very confusing that way so being direct is so important when communicating um, nurturing vulnerability when someone is um, sharing something that's really important to them recognizing that this is really important time to be there for them so those are the um, topics we've covered so far and learning these skills are great, but practicing them is when we actually learn stuff. So that's what we do in these spaces. We put these skills to practice and um, today's topic that we're going to cover is drum roll, drum roll. Today's topic is validation. So when we bring, when someone brings something up to us, um, that is frustrating them, you know, it's our job to make them feel valid and heard, that we understand why they're frustrated, even if we might not agree with them. And this is a hard thing to do um, a lot of the time because when someone brings up something that they're upset about, we go into defensive mode. So validation is a big one. And the one that I use the most, it's a really easy small phrase and it's I hear you. I hear you doesn't mean you have to agree with them. Um, it just it just for a second makes them feel like they're heard. And you can go from there to make them feel more validated or if you need to say something else, you can. But I hear you is a really good one. Um, another one that people use is that's valid. Um, you're right. And then you can always continue from there, but you can start off that way. So I hear you is my favorite go-to one. And we're going to put this in practice with different scenarios that we have off Reddit. At each point, at any point, if you want to request to speak, just put your hand up. and Or if you want to share any stories or ask any um, anything specific about your own situation or about a friend's situation in quotation marks, um, that's what we're all about. I'm here to add as much value as I can and um, yeah, just pass as much knowledge as I can to you guys. So we'll jump straight in. So this question on Reddit from the last week is about a 34-year-old female and a 38-year-old male. And the title is, my boyfriend no longer sends me good morning texts. And a little bit of background on this one is a year ago, he would call me every day and send me good morning texts. I would have been the first person he called if he was upset about something. Now I feel him pulling away. He doesn't send me good morning texts anymore. He's struggling, going through a rough time. I've seen him do this before. He pulls away in relationships and now I feel pathetic begging for time and attention that he used to give me freely. 
When I've tried to bring up my feelings, he says, I am just overthinking everything, which hasn't been really reassuring. That's a quick summary of that one. So we're going to do a, there's, I, we've got three options here of how to approach a situation like this. I want to turn you guys all into relationship experts and empower you guys to be able to help your friends or anyone in situations like this if they come to you. So I'm going to give you guys three options. And if you guys can, at the bottom of your screen, there are a few different icons. And there's one that's a love heart with a plus on it. If you click that one, on your phone, if you're on Twitter on your phone, then you can see a bunch of different reactions. So I want you guys to give a thumbs up if you think this is a good way to approach this situation as a solution for them. So we're just trying to find the best answer. We're going to see what reactions people are giving. So this is recapping the topic was my boyfriend no longer sends me good morning texts. Option A, give him space. What do we think, guys? Are we thinking thumbs up with reactions? Oh, thumbs down, thumbs down. Okay. Another thumbs down. All right, all right. Um, We've got B, keep bringing it up until resolved. What are we thinking? Thumbs up for that one? What was that for the one before? I don't know. You can always speak up, (laughs) request to speak to clarify. Thumbs down. Okay. Keep bringing up until resolved. Okay. Then we go, I think one thumbs up, one thumbs down. We got a request to speak, which is super awesome. Go for it. I'm sorry, Queen. I'm I'm on break right now and I'm like eating a meal and I you, <laughs> I didn't expect you to like put me on speaker that quick. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. Take it easy, take it easy. Enjoy your meal. If you ever want to say anything, just unmute. Um I I I, I do real quick. I just want to say thank you for throwing the space. Um, and it's actually something that I actually wanted to speak about or hear someone speak about because, uh, I recently got out of a relationship, I would say six months ago, but it's, Mm there's still like, I'd say habits that still lingering around, uh, traits, like toxic traits, negative, negative traits, uh, uh, thoughts, stuff like that. And I feel there's a lot of things also. In, in the relationship, I didn't understand, you know, and plus but prior before that, I did like two, three years without getting into a relationship. And mm. yeah, I feel like there's certain things I need to learn here. Thank you so much for sharing. Absolutely. And if any of these points um, kind of struck out at you or you have a specific story or something that you're unsure about, where if you did it right or wrong, were you in the right? Were, you, was, were they in the right? Should you have handled it differently? Just feel free to um, speak up. That's, that's literally what I'm here for. And I'm, I'm so happy you're here, honestly. Um, so with this one, um, yeah, so at any point, just feel free to ask any questions. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to help your situation. These, these questions I've got are great examples and they're, they're just um, space fillers for until someone wants to uh, ask a question. So that's kind of how it's structured. So don't feel bad about bringing something up at all. So um, with this one about sending good morning texts, so there was give him space, there's keep bringing it up until resolved, and there's um, you send the good morning text instead. Thumbs up or thumbs down for the last one, do you guys think? So you send good morning texts instead of them sending it. What are we thinking? bit of silence going on, a bit of unsureness. Okay, so with this one, we got a thumbs up. Okay, okay. So we've got kind of an even spread between you guys of what you think is the right play here. So the best answer, in my opinion, is keep bringing it up until resolved. And the reason that um, I've selected this as the best answer out of the three is because give him space, um, which was the first option, is it seems like he's struggling and he's going through a hard time. And if he's pulling away from the relationship and that's something you're noticing, giving him space is is not the answer. Um, There's a, a lot more that needs to be done to address the issue. And it seems to be much more of an issue than just sending good morning texts. So that's why I ruled that one out as not being the best solution. 
Um, the other um, suggestion that I rolled out was you send good morning text instead. And that, that's generally a decent idea if someone came up with it. Um, but it doesn't address the underlying issue that's kind of going on here. So that's why um, it might solve the problem for a little bit. Maybe he'll he'll jump right into it and respond to your morning text. But it seems like this is bothering her that he's not sending it first. So this feeling that's upsetting her is probably going to continue even if she sends morning texts. And he's not going to know that she's getting more and more frustrated every time she sends morning texts. So keep bringing it up until resolved is not to bring it up in a na nagging way to keep bringing it up that way, but to really address what's going on and uh, kind of highlight what you both need from the relationship. And if he's pulling away from the relationship, find out why. Um, and, you know, maybe he does, you know, restart sending you good morning texts, but maybe there's something he's really missing from you that you need to, um, you know, pick up the game and you just don't know it yet because he hasn't shared it and he's bottled it in. Or maybe he has brought it up and he feels like it's not gotten anywhere. So he just stops bringing it up now. So really important to um, bring up frustrations when they're bothering you and um, try and resolve them and get to the underlying issue um, and not just let it like fester because it'll just get worse. Of course, we can all rise above not getting good morning texts, but we need to make sure that the foundation of the relationship is, is good. So let's do a quick role play. I've actually got my husband on the line, Armand. Um, let's just role play this because it's easy to be able to say what the right answer is or what the best answer is but to be able to practice it is something else so we're going to try and keep it as natural as possible obviously it's role played but we'll do our best and i'm gonna yeah try. just very belligerently go after me <laughs> i'll try i'll try okay so you're gonna be the guy you're distressed <laughs> i'm just okay i'm gonna be the girl who wants the good morning text mm -hmm. And you're going to be the guy who's stopped sending me good morning texts. And I'm going to come at you, try and do it. So I'm mad, but I'm going to try and do it softly with a soft startup. Um, and you're going to validate um, what I'm feeling. That's the first thing you're going to do somehow. And then and then just go from there because we're practicing validating feelings <laughs> this, this week. So, all right. Ready to jump into it, Armand? I'm ready. Ready. All right, let's do this. So, okay, Arwan, there's something I need to talk to you about. It's like really upsetting me. Um, do you have time right now? Yeah. Uh, you now I was about to go. Uh, or do you know how long it's going to take? Um, well, if, if I don't know how long we're going to take to resolve it, but maybe like, I don't know. It could be five minutes, it could be longer. Okay, I'm going to assume that this is uh, going to take a little bit longer, and then I'm also going to assume that I've uh, got the time for it. So, <laughs> Sounds good, sounds good. Um, all right, so like a year ago, until the last couple of months, like you were sending me good morning texts like all the time, and like the last like, I don't know, like two, three months, like you've stopped doing that, and it's just, I feel like my like, not good enough for you to say like I don't know it's like I don't want to beg for your time it's like I it's just such a small thing and it's like you stop doing it and like it just feels really crap like mm -hmm. yeah yeah like I don't want to beg for your love you know yeah I mean I guess do you feel like you're having to beg for my love yeah because like you're pulling away from me and like you know this is just such a small thing that I want and it's like you know something you used to do and it's like i don't know like why aren't you doing it anymore okay i hear you um so it seems like this good morning text is uh something that's important to you yeah is that is that correct yeah okay and it also seems like you know they're you know you you feel like it, you know, it has to do with the morning text, but it feels like there's more than that. Like, and you said that you feel like I'm pulling away from you. Yeah, like you used to call me like whenever anything's wrong or like, just like talk to me so much more. And now I just feel like, you know, 
I know you're going through like stuff and life is hard and stuff, but like I just we don't talk anymore. And like this this text that used to send me every morning used to be like my connection to you. And now like even that is gone and I just don't know if it's temporary, like ugh. Okay, okay. I'm I'm with you. I got you. Um Yeah. I guess this really has you know, things have been really busy with work. Uh, you know, we've got like a big uh, deadline coming up and that's kind of taken up on my time and you know, I'm going to just work a lot and, you know, I, I don't really feel the best. Um, and then kind of on top of that, you know, I, I know you said these texts are very important to you, uh, but, you know, it just, I kind of stopped sending them after a while because it seemed like a bit of a chore. Um, I just, you know, I'm not the best with texting, you know, but, you know, if this is something important to you, you know, you're important to me. Yeah. So if this, if this is something that matters to you, uh, yeah, like let's try to figure something out um, and make sure that, you know, we're spending time together. And, you know, since I don't have the most time right now, that the time we are spending together is, you know, really high quality and it's, you know, appreciated. You know, we're not, we're not doing something that, like, whatever, we both hate or one of us hates or something like that. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I know you said it's like a chore for you to send me texts and stuff and that's why you don't do it. Like, obviously, that feels like really crap to hear that I'm like a chore to you, but like... I'd rather get a text that's a chore than no text at all, you know? And, like, I know you care about me, but, I, yeah, I just I need to see it in action and that. And, like, you know, hopefully one day you will, like, not feel like it's a chore, but, yeah. That's and I just want to clarify, like, I, I don't think you are a chore. I, I really like you. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I, you know, you know, I, I've never been, like, a really great texter and you know that's actually something that i was really surprised that you brought out in me like it is just totally not like me to be you know that into texting and stuff like that and it was you know you know i, I was really surprised myself you know but kind of my natural state is you know kind of not not sending texts as much but you know if it's something that's really important to you is this is something uh, I can work on that we can, you know, figure out. Okay. And maybe we maybe we can meet somewhere in the middle of, you know, every day. Or maybe I, I can do something else, you know, call you on my break instead of text you, uh, something like that. Maybe I can call you in the car when I'm driving to work. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know you were, like, not into texting at all before or not really before. Um, okay, that like helps, I don't know, a little bit for me to understand you better. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, w- I would like to figure out a way. Like, ideally, like, I want it to not to be a chore and obviously for it to happen every day, but like, I know you're under a lot of pressure, so that's probably something you can't do. Or well, I don't know, maybe you can do, but yeah, like, I guess what, what is a amount that you feel like you can do? Well, like, you know, kind of this idea of, oh, sorry. Sorry, I just meant like how, like, let me know. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, every day I have to drive to work um, and I'm not really doing anything during that time. You know, that could just be like, you know, a time when I call you and we get to spend a little bit of time together. You know, I'm not feel like it's, you know, killing my momentum, getting out of bed and you know, that if I send a text and you respond and I have to respond and, you know, it's just like, hey, you know, before work, like I'm driving to work and I'm not doing anything then. So like, hey, let's, you know, and, and I like spending time with you. So let's, you know, why why not let, you know, let's use that five, ten minutes to just spend some time together. Okay. Okay. And like, are you, like, are you turning away from me because of other things? Like, is there like someone else or like is it just purely like a text fatigue thing that you don't like doing yeah there's there's not anyone else it's it's just you 
it's just yeah it's just you know in in general some uh fatigue okay so i mean i, I could get really meta here and make up an issue but <laughs> yeah we won't drag it out too long but like that's a i appreciate you armand thank you um so that that's a way of trying to to figure it out and we both tried to address like you know, is there any underlying thing going on? He didn't create anything. But for me, if I had a bit more time, I would have gone into, yeah, like the time we spend together at home right now, I don't find that it's it's not quality time for me. Like talking about like if we had kids, like you're talking about our kids is not as um, not something that I, I qualify as quality time. But like watching a TV show with you, that's something I think is quality time. <laughs> That part's very real. <laughs> so we personally had to make adjustments to, um, you know, make quality time really quality time. So, okay. Thank yeah, that's really interesting that there were times when I thought that we were spending time together and I was like, oh, okay, we spend a bunch of time together and I'd go do my own thing. Kimi would be like, what the heck? Like, why? Like, we haven't even why aren't we like watching this TV show? And I'm like, bro, I just spent like an hour talking to you about stuff. And, I'm, and it's just like after a while, like I just realized like, dude, she doesn't like it's not important to her. So like I could just like, you know, five minutes into the conversation, I'd be like, all right, I'm just going to cut this off here. I'm going to go do my thing and then, I'll, you know, let's go watch something later. Um, and we're both happier. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, that one's, like, so true, so real. Um, and that one, like, falls right back to love languages. And, like, yeah, it's good we both know quality time is is important. But, like, getting quality time right where it's meaningful to both of us, it takes a while to figure out what that is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up, Armand. All right, let's go to let's go to another Reddit question. Does anyone have anything they want to say or... Uh, a story they want to share or anything they want to ask. All right. All right. Seems like we're good to go. All right. So the next question I've got here is I tried talking to my boyfriend about feelings and he made it all about himself and made me feel selfish. So a bit of background on this one is, so yesterday I had a talk with my boyfriend about a couple of things that have been bugging me. First was that I would like him to see my family again because my family means a lot to me and he's only seen them twice in our year and a half relationship. He is okay with it. He definitely doesn't want to and he's made that pretty clear in the past. Second was that I'd like him to plan some dates for us once in a while because I feel like I'm always the one making plans or suggesting things to do. I told him it would make me feel special if he planned stuff to do. And um, this set him off. He turned everything on to, he made everything about himself and made the whole talk um, about him being upset with me because apparently I want so much and sorry, I can't give you the world. This made me so upset. I have problems expressing my feelings due to a really crap relationship in the past. So it was kind of a lot for me to express my feelings in the first place. So when he turned it on himself and made me feel like the bad guy, I shut down, which I know isn't good, but made me feel so selfish for wanting these two things. So we've got three options of what she should do at this point. One, understand him and negotiate. Number two, explain you're not asking for much. Or three, talk to your family and friends for solutions. So let's go back to the first one. Understand him and negotiate. Who thinks that one's the best one? Thumbs up if you do. Well, I'm a bit unsure on that one. Explain you're not asking for much. Who thinks thumbs up for that one? Okay, a bit unsure about that one too. Talk to your family. Okay, thumbs, thumbs down for that one. Okay, talk to your family and friends for solutions. How do you think? Thumbs up for that one? Thumbs down for that one? Okay, by process of elimination for the person who's voted. Um, it goes to A, understand him and negotiate. And so that one actually I put as the best solution. And um, 
a lot of people on Reddit actually were like, you know, ditch him, like he's the worst, like he's making you feel bad. And we're going to go with a brief assumption on these Reddit questions that there's a good reason you're with them. Um, And we don't know how she presented this information to him. It's possible she says that, you know, she's saying that she expressed herself as clearly as she did in these paragraphs, but it's possible she didn't express it properly to him and he reacted that way. Um, Or we just don't know the full situation. So let's assume that they that they um, have good qualities and that's why they're together. Um, So in a situation like that, and also with the two things um, that, you know, people are very quick to jump the gun, but he said that he is open to seeing her family again and that, um, you know, it's the part about planning stuff for dates that's bothering her, not that he won't go on dates with her or he doesn't pay or anything like that. It's the planning part. That's um, that she wants him to decide where, what they're doing. That seems to be the crux of it. So it's very easy to generalize uh, when you hear something like this and be like, oh, my gosh, that's so terrible. But so understanding him, where he's coming from, um, like what he's willing to do and negotiate is seems like the way to go. Um, explain that you're not asking for much, which was option B. The reason I didn't put that one as the best was because um, – that just immediately kind of goes into an argument, um, explaining, you know, asking for too much because he said, you know, you want the world. I'm not asking for uh, for much. You know, that just that just creates conflict. That one that doesn't go towards a solution. That kind of gets you both really angry. And what we found in and science is that when your heart rate is above a hundred, or if you're fit, if it's above eighty. Um, the chances of you resolving an uh, argument is less than 10%. So your success rate is less than 10% when you're riled up. So you really, like in a situation like that, when you notice that you're riled up, if you do have a smartwatch that can tell, um, you know, what your heart rate is, that's awesome. I don't have one, so I have to go by, you know, trying to gauge how upset I am. Um, but if you notice that you're there, the best thing to do is just to take a 15 minute break, be like, look, I'm going to come back. We're going to solve this. Um, But I I just need to step away from the situation for at least 15, 20 minutes and go do something completely unrelated to the argument. So, um, you know, uh, go, I don't know, listen to some music, go for a walk, like something that doesn't have you keep thinking about the situation. Because if you do keep thinking about the situation, um, your heart rate doesn't go down that much and you're still really agitated. So you need to distract yourself, come back with a lower heart rate, you know, thinking about it a little more freshly. And then your chances are so much higher to resolving the problem that so your odds immediately increase. Even if you're right, you're not going to have good odds if you're both riled up. So that is the takeaway from that one. Um, C was talk to your friends and family for solutions. Now, generally, it's great to have a support system. I would encourage that. But in this situation, I wouldn't say it's the best because if you go to your, I just put friends in there to throw you guys off, but the the family is the key one here. So it looks like the boyfriend doesn't like the family. If you go to your family and be like, oh yeah, my boyfriend doesn't like you guys doesn't want to see you guys like obviously they're going to tell you to get rid of him and stuff like that and the conversation is not going to be productive um so that's why I'm assuming you like this person for good reasons so you kind of need to work work on this specific issue is better to work um on it with your partner directly than getting any outside influence um because it's just very personal to to your family on this one and it's hard to let something go like that if they if they hear it. Um, so yeah, that's that's why we would go understand him and negotiate. Omi, do you want to role play this one where we're gonna go through this where I'm trying to ask for two things and you're just thinking that I'm asking for everything? I'm gonna invite you to speak. I don't know if you're able to accept that. Awesome. 
All right, are you able to use your mic? But Armand did it so eloquently last time. <laughs> nah, nah, you're good at doing them too. You're good at doing them too. Okay, so this um, this week we're validating feelings. So you're gonna be the guy. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna share that I'm mad at you. Um, we've already had this conversation where you're like, you ask for everything, you want the world. So we've already had that chat, and I'm gonna bring it up again. Are you ready? Sure. All right. Okay. All right. So, look, I need to chat with you about um, the conversation we had the other day. Um, is this, like, a good time? I, I guess this is a good time, considering the fact that I'm not really doing anything right now. Okay. Um so, yeah, it was actually really hard for me to share what I needed in a relationship because I don't usually talk about my problems. And, like, yeah, it's just it was a very big deal for me to open up. And I felt like you um, just shut me down and was, like, made it about you and um, just said that I'm, I'm, I shouldn't ask for the things that I want. So I just wanted to kind of understand like what made you have that reaction and that I you know I really need to feel like you care about my feelings when I ask for stuff and and then just trying to figure out how we can make these two things that I'm asking for work babe you know I care but just the way you worded the argument last time it just had me you know like it had my heat raising and I just feel like the way that you, like, delivered the message was coming from a place of you being aggravated and just wanting to insult me. Like, was it my tone? Like, what was it? It was your tone. It was your wording. It was you fidgeting and having that general behavior. Oh, wow. So, like, all the words I was saying was going out the window. You were, like, focusing on my turn and, like, my body language and everything. Yeah, exactly. (sighs) Okay. Well, that's obviously hard to hear because, you know, obviously I want my words to be heard. Um, But, all right, you know, like, if tone is that important to you, like, you know, I can take that into consideration. Like, is my tone right now... um, like riling you up nah it's calm it's logical it's calculated it's tough okay all right because i actually thought my tone was a bit high but all right (laughs) okay so i'm glad okay so what tone is it that really bothers you is it like if i'm yelling like is it the volume like is it words i say like what is that that really gets you it's it's a bit of both if your volume's too high or starting to uh, elevate, and if you're using words to describe certain actions, that can lead to fights. Okay. Like, what are some words that can lead to fights for you? Like, dismiss. You just pinning all of the bad negative juju on me for not doing one activity, saying Mm. that I am a problem, that I need to come up with a conclusion. Okay, so kind of like not, not approaching it like a team sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. All right, well, I definitely understand better now why you reacted the way you did. Um, all right, so, like, yeah, I asked for uh, two things, and I, I'm going to try and regulate my tone as I talk about it. And, um, yeah, so the first thing was, you know, my family, obviously, you know, I love them. I know you don't really, not really gelling with them well. Um, I, you know, are you down to see them? you know, um, in the next, like, three months? Um, Or, like, how did you want to approach that, like, as a team? Like, I want to also be there for you and understand that 
you know, there were things my family did that upset you. That was, you know, fair enough. And I understand. Um, but yeah, where are you at with the family one? I, I understand that we're not perfect, but as long as we support each other, I'm sure that if we go to your family meeting, I might not enjoy it, but with your support, I'll enjoy anything. Okay. Like, what do you need support from me to, like, how can I show you support while it's happening? Like, while you're there? Like, if they, like, make an argument, I'd like to have your back within reason. Okay. Okay. So if, you know, there's some tiff going on for me to kind of show you that I'm kind of on your side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we can go in the next like three months. Sure. We can go in the next week if you would like, as long as I'm not working or doing anything. Okay. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, And then the other thing was, I know we do go on like, some dates sometimes but like yeah it's just the planning part that really like I just feel like I'm the one always doing that and I feel like I'm the only one that cares in the relationship and I know that's not true but it just makes me feel like that um like yeah I just it would be awesome like if you could just decide some things you want to do for like when we do dates um is that like I know you, like, when I brought that up, it seemed like you said that was asking for the world. Um, yeah, just just let me know kind of what you're okay with. You know, like, when you asked me, I had uni, I had work, I had to put budgets in. That was a stressful time for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I probably should have asked you what you were doing before I had that conversation with you. Yeah. Um, well, like, I don't know. Like, are you, like, I need you to be able to plan, like, what are we doing? We're doing, like, a date every every fortnight, every two weeks. Um, like, for the next two weeks, so for the next month, every two weeks, can you just plan the next two um, dates, like with what we're doing and stuff? Yeah, I can schedule that in. Okay. And then, like, maybe after that, after those two, like, we can chat about, like, um, how we, you know, schedule dates and stuff in the future with, like, how we plan stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm sure we can come up with, like, a roster situation as well. Yeah, it sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks, I mean, I appreciate you role playing with me. Um, no worries. All good, all good. And like for anyone here, um, you know, if you, you know, we all react differently to stuff, and this is quite PG of us, um, you know, role playing. But it's it's really great if anyone wants to step up and be brave enough to role play when I do stuff like this, and just be either yourselves or be your partner or be a really difficult person and see like how does someone even cope with. Um, you know someone being really difficult or just like shutting everything you say down so definitely open for a challenge and I know a lot of the things that when we're in relationships might feel like a broken record we try um, to fix things and they don't get anywhere and we just end in cycles and cycles of like not getting anywhere so then we stop bringing it up and we start bottling it in and it can build up in resentment and you know, feeling um, distant to your partner and things like that. So um, definitely helps to hear when a difficult conversation, how to navigate that. So definitely open to anyone bringing that up or being open for that challenge. Um, I'll just check in again if there's any questions anyone has or any stories or anything anyone wants to step up and share. Go for it. Juice, the floor is yours. Hopefully you can hear me. I see your hand, Juice. Go for it. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I did have a question on that, like with relationships, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. um, like regarding relationships, like I, 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 I learned more about relationships when I came to when I got out of it, and like more about toxic relationships. Uh, like I used to go, like I used to headbutt 
had butt, butt heads with my partner. Like, it used to be like she was very insecure because one thing, like, I call every man or guy king, and I call every girl or woman queen. And mm-hmm, those mm-hmm. things, you know, they create they created a sort of insecurity inside that person's head, you know, thinking that I am like calling like any type of woman, you know, those type of things. And like I, I would have a secret intention, like a dark intention, you know what I'm saying? And I never never did. And I even went as far to like getting an extra job to cover the extra time I had in my hands. Um, like I'm I'm a licensed social worker and personal trainer. Like, uh, I ended up getting another freaking personal training job at another gym just to show her, like, I didn't, because I, all I do, like, my schedule is if I'm, like, in the mornings, I'm personal training for three, four hours, and then I come to work for social worker, and then I have, like, like in the mornings, I'll have time, like, two hours before I leave for my next job. And I'll play, I'll, I'll play little games, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll play uh, Call of Duty. You know, the PlayStation, mm. like, just because I'm bored or I'll read a book or watch movies. I like watching movies and stuff like that on my free time. And the thing is, this this woman never seemed to understand, like, I'm one of those men who I don't chase women, meaning, like, I don't, like, I I have something to build from myself first. Like, you know, I'm not these guys who's like, oh, oh, women this or worrying about what's between their legs or under their bra. Or, like, I'm not lusting for anything. And it left me so much. It left me, like, mentally crippled. You know what I'm saying? Because I have to, like, <laughs> sit here and be like, hey, you know, that's not me. And it was mentally deprived, like, depriving my brain when I was, like, trying to explain myself over and over, you know, about something mm-hmm. that I would never do. I'm like, I'm in my 25 years of living, I've never cheated and I won't ever try it. Why would I try it now? And I went to like extreme measures of like trying to show this person, you know, and where the insecurities started, they were like, oh, like liking pictures. But every picture I ended up liking weren't pictures like, oh, any lustful picture. They could be with someone's face and they're a friend. And it was, yeah, it was that hard. It was crazy. That sounds like a lot. Did um, your previous girlfriend have um, any history with being cheated on or anything like that or not really? Oh, I don't know if my voice came through. Um, hopefully my mic's still working. I don't know if you can hear me, Juice, but did your girlfriend, ex-girlfriend have any history with being cheated on in the past or anything like that? She most definitely did. And... One second, one second, Queen. Mm. I'm so sorry. I'm currently, I'm trying to find somewhere quiet. I'm at work right now. Oh, good, I'm oh, going to sneak in the washroom real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, yes, he did have a, a, a boyfriend previously before me that was, I'd say, well, he was uh, like four or five years older than her. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, and like he, like he did everything under the sun, like cheated on her while, like he lived with uh, with his mother and, you know, um, he had two kids, never told her about it, uh, cheated on her while, while, uh, she was in a house. I think, uh, they had like a two story house or place. I don't really know, but uh, he had her stay upstairs and he did his business downstairs. You know, he put hands on her. Like, the thing is, I knew in the beginning what I was getting myself into when I was like, just a friend. And I'm from Miami. Like, I'm just moving to Canada like three years ago. And she's one of, literally one of the first girls. Like, I met other girls, you know, but I didn't have, like, the connection that I did with her. Like, you know what I'm saying? And nor am I the type of dude to get in cahoots lustfully with women. Like, I just wanted her to believe that, you know what I'm saying? In the beginning, she did. And it was like, oh, I don't like, she says, explain things she don't like, okay. And it all started on like, you know, my first Halloween in Canada, in, in Toronto, you know, like 
my friend wore an anime character suit and the only thing it showed was her stomach. You know, and I ended up liking the picture because this is a friend of mine. And I tell you this sincerely, genuinely from my heart, my soul, that I have no lust, like nothing towards this person, nor it will ever happen. And that's how I had to explain every time. Like, how I'm talking to you guys, I can say something once. You know, I'm not saying like, oh, somebody says something or acts many times, I'm going to get pissed or annoyed or I won't say it. It's just, this is where I have to go. Like, every conversation is, I don't trust you. I don't believe a word you're saying. And it was confusing me when it was like, okay, how can, like, I, I grew up where I'm from. It's like, you can't fully love somebody if you don't trust them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just don't understand, like, because if you, that's what I wanted from her at first. I wanted to earn her trust. That's how it's always been with me in my life. Like, I would want to earn that person, whether it's a man, like, you my, you, you going to be my friend, my homeboy. I want to earn, I want to show you that you can trust me. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing as a woman. If I, if my intention is to get in a relationship with her, I want to show her, like, hey, you can trust me. You know what I'm saying? And when she was like, when it got to a point, she was like, oh, you're liking girls' pictures. And I'm like, like, I cut off, I lost a lot of friends because of being in this relationship. Some of them I rekindled, some of them I couldn't even rekindle. You know what I'm saying? Because it was just, it was too much, you know? And it was like, I, I tried the best I can. Like, there's times I didn't even understand, like, how to fix the situation. I even became toxic, like, at the moment. That's what I was mentioning earlier, Queen. Like, I was mentioning, like, Danny, I still having some of those habits. Like, the biggest habits I still have. Like, I'll talk to you, and you'll be like, how do I explain it? You'll be like, okay, um, you'll be like, where you at right now, bro? Like, you know, just bring a conversation. Like, where you at right now? Like, you know, like, I would send you a picture you know, not to just not to show you like, oh, this is this is fun. This is what I'm doing. Like, I'm sending it to you because that's what I'm mentally like in a negative way. That's what I used to do in my head. Like, I went to like, it's crazy to say like I'm 25 years old and this is what I had to deal with. You know what I'm saying? And this is somebody who's around the same age as me. She was 23, turned 24. You know, and she was a nurse and stuff like that. You know, and it's like. She dealt with a lot of things, and like I said, I knew what I was getting myself into, but it was like, I'm a person, like, I don't give up on people, and let alone, I don't look at somebody and be like, oh, just because, you know, they they have some toxic traits don't mean that shit can't get out of them, or that can't get away, like, they can't get better. I don't believe, they, I don't believe that. I don't believe, like, somebody can't get better with these things, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I still indulge, and plus, I have strong emotions for this person, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I didn't understand what it was like, why, as a man that I am, like, you're destroying the way I view myself as a man and I carry myself by saying that, you know, it's like I have two gym jobs. I had tar two gym jobs, and I'm working in the mental health field, let alone, like, I'm in Web3. Like, I was working Web3 jobs. Like, I was more busy. Like, I was busy, like, it was no tomorrow to a point where, like, I was trying to show her, like, I was so busy, I had time for people. And it came to a point, like, I barely had time for her, you know, and she was a nurse. She worked 12 hour shifts. And we got to a point where we actually talked about how, you know, I'm like, she's like, look, I'm, I'm a nurse. Cause I used to be like, look, uh, it's like when I'm off, she isn't. When she's off, I'm not. So it would be really hard to, you know, it'd be a hit and miss to get the time to like meet her and meet up with her and stuff like that. And she came up with the idea. She's like, look, I'm a nurse, but we can meet up, you know, on certain days and stuff like that. She's like, I'm going to be real busy. And the thing is, I understood that. You know, I understood, like, that also gives both of us room to breathe because we got our own stuff. Like, nobody wants to, like, like, she's a nurse and I'm a social worker. You know what I'm saying? Like, we both have stressful, like, I'm not saying other people don't have stressful jobs, but that's, those are jobs in the medical field, you know what I'm saying, in the mental health field. It's difficult sometimes to deal with people that will throw the worst shit at you. And I'm, I'm talking about insults and all that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want to go home and deal with that, deal with negativity with your partner after that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we come to understand each other's field, you know? And it got to the point because, like, I knew it in my heart. I just didn't tell her in the moment we agreed to this. 
when she was like, oh, I'm okay with like going times without seeing you. It got to a point where it was like, okay, uh, I'm, I'm on Twitter too much. I'm on Web3 too much. I'm at the gym too much. I'm gaming too much. Like everything I try to do to show her like, okay, I don't have time for women. You know what I'm saying? And I hate saying that like it sounds like freaking self. It sounds like I don't want to talk to any woman or whatever, like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm out here, like, if I like, I have a friend, if, if I'm on Twitter, I'm saying, oh, queen, good job, congratulations. And she'll come up and be like, why don't you tell these people how toxic you is? You tell these people how proud, like, I'm like, what? Why would I do that? Like, why would I go on social media and throw my problems out? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying that to people that really need help and that do it, but I'm just saying, like, why would I go, this has nothing to do with other people. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I don't have chemistry with people to the point where I'm dating them, where I have to repeat myself constantly. Like, I used to repeat myself four times every time, guys, like, no joke, every time. And, like, I've had this person, you know, curse me and say the most hurtful words that a woman should never say to a man or a human being should never say to another human being. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, I still stuck around. And that's because, like, in my head, I refuse to give up on that person. And I refuse, I refuse to, like, okay, if I give up now, I feel like, you know, my, my fear was, like, I would lose them. And when they get with somebody else, they would be how I want to be in the relationship with me. Like, you know, I'm not saying normal. I'm saying, like, you know, no no arguments and stuff like that. None of the negativity. You know what I'm saying? None of the toxic stuff. But I had to choose to let that go, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not gonna lie, it was it was slowing me down, like really bad, to the point like I started losing my clients, you know, and personal training, because like I don't know the stress was so was so overbearing, it was no joke, you know, and it was just like I, to this day like there's things I didn't understand, and because. I used to ask myself, like, why am I continuously connected to this person, like, attached or something? You know, like, I always, like, I always tell myself, I don't care what you say to me to put me down. Because that's how well, that's what she was. She would say words to you because you hurt her. And, like, like, she'll, like, I'm not, excuse my words, she'll, like, she'll be like, F you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you say it to her, she turns it into a victim mentality, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not saying everything entirely for her. You know what I'm saying? I have my parts too. But it's just like, I never understood the fact that how, how many times, because I heard it saying, like, if you repeat something to somebody many times, they'll, they'll begin to believe it. And it's like, I've been, I sat there for a year and a half telling her, like, hey, I'm not a cheater. It's not going to happen. No, will it ever happen. Like, I don't have time for that. Like, I got to the point I was telling her, like, look, I'm trying to make a foundation for me out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've lost five years of my life. You know, like, I don't share it with a lot of people, but I did time back in America. You know, um, that's not why I'm here, but it's just, I did time in America. And the thing is, it doesn't affect me at all because, you know, everybody thought, like, I would be one of those people that's just nothing. You know, like, I have, I have two businesses. Right when I hopped out of prison, uh, pr uh, prison I opened a couple businesses. You know, like, I, I did everything I could to get myself on feet. And the reason it hurt me was because I had a person, my focus was never a woman. Never, never, not even a friend, not even a family. I had to be selfish at times to be where I'm at. You know, I'm, am I like that anymore? No. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have to be, you know, that strictly selfish. And it's like, when that person was like, oh, you're, you're, you're into women. Oh, you're trying to F her. You're trying to Lay in bed with her, trying to get in her panties, you know. Like when you saying that, it just it hurts me. It, it, it's tarnishing the man that I carry. You know what I'm saying? Because I truly, in my soul, like I'm not saying I don't care about women. Like I love men and women. You know what I'm saying? I love every human being. I'm not saying I don't care for y'all 100 percent overall. I'm just saying like I don't care for that sex and loveful, lustfulness, all that type of stuff. Like. There are, human, there are women and men out here who are, are celibate or go long times without sex or without, you know, those type of sexual desires and stuff like that. And for you to be a person that someone's built their life 
to work so hard and you're still thinking like, oh, they're cheating or they're lying to you about, or they will. Like, I just never understood that. My bad, Queen. That was, that was something I had to say. Thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate your bravery to just honestly lay it out. Um, I think that's so important and needed in this society because we don't talk about these things and everyone just thinks everyone has a really great relationship and that's not true. Um, so thank you. I can't thank you enough for um, sharing what you did. And it's so difficult. You gave a year and a half of your life doing your best in this situation. And you said you, you know, you'd kind of knew this a little bit going into it that it was going to be really tough but you were like I'm going to do this for this person I'm going to give everything you had and you didn't cheat and like you know you really worked so hard at it and um, you realized like it was it was taking too much it was you know it's it doesn't seem like it's getting better for you um, you know she constantly thinks you're cheating no matter what you do to improve the situation doesn't seem to be working um, and you had to end things um I would take a guess that you don't want her back. Like if she was back here, I assume you are at a point where you realize that you need something else um, in a partner, uh, which is having stability and having that trust. I remember you said um, while you were speaking that trust is so important in your family um, and earning that trust. And, um, you know, you were doing all the things to be able to show um, that you are trustworthy, um, you know, for example, um, you know, if it was important to her to show you that you didn't have, um, much time, like you even got that other job to prove to her, um, if she understood that that's why you did it, you know, that, that should have increased her trust in you, but it didn't seem to work that. And it seems like she was also quite verbally abusive towards you, um, in this situation and then would play the victim as well. So that's really tough. And it, it also kind of makes sense with the history that she's had where she was so severely cheated on in the past. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. No one should, it's, you know, I wish no one had to go through that. Um, moving forward, um, you know, having had this experience, you know, you can definitely make sure that, um, now that you've broken up for six months that you will definitely get a really much higher quality woman in your life um, in the future and um, make sure that you know they are able to um, trust you when you say um, and show in your actions that you are not um, doing anything imp inappropriate so yeah, definitely. Please value that. I know you're very kind and, you know, you see the best in people and you're like, I'm going to make this work no matter what. But in this situation, this was this wasn't something that was a, a good match and um, definitely get someone on your level. Um, probably someone that she needs is someone um, like if there's any chance she's going to get out of this for herself, it would be to be with someone where um they would just have to understand she's being completely unreasonable. And when she says, like, you know, don't say queen to other people, like, they'll, they did just accommodate all of the things that are making her insecure for, year, like, as many years and then see if that slowly builds trust. Like, you know, you did you did it for a year and a half and it didn't work. Um, you know, it's it seems like it's going to take someone much longer to see improvement and, you know, you realize that you deserve someone who's there with you right now. And this is a deal breaker, um, someone who's got this part of their life sorted. So um, it's just going to get better from here. And I'm glad you've realized what your deal breakers are in a relationship. Um, so, yeah, you're still young. You're 25. Um, you've got an amazing uh, life ahead of you. And we have spaces like this every Thursday um, to make sure that we can provide as much value as we can to make sure you have great relationships moving forward and you can always ask any questions if you find someone and you're like not sure if you know they have now other problems that you don't know if you'll um, want to deal with definitely uh, this is a place where I'm, I'm here to answer any questions you need um, yeah if you need one-on-one -on -one sessions um, that's also an option um, but yeah yeah just we have a community behind you and we definitely want to make sure you find someone amazing this time around and um, no settling for anyone 
less. So sending you a lot of love and thank you so much for for sharing that. I appreciate that, that Colleen. I, I really do. Um, I, one quick question: uh, Are you going to continue mm-hmm. growing new spaces? Because I've seen Juicy added you to uh, not Juicy Mel, sorry, Mel added you to the Space Gala. Yes, yes. Hi, that's so awesome that you found me from there. So, yes, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, um, I have these sessions. I've had them for the last eight weeks every Thursday. We plan to continue them. So same time every week. Uh, we're here um, to just chat all things relationships. Okay. Yeah, just throw those spaces in there. Um, which I'll always catch it in there. I appreciate you. I definitely will. I'll also DM you the Twitter spaces just so you get um, them directly as well. Oh, I'll get them directly. That's that's. Uh, I made that that group chat. I'll get them directly. Oh, that's awesome. Sure thing. Sure thing. I'll definitely pop them in there. I appreciate you, Quinn. I really, really, I'm really because I I, oh. I feel like I needed to release that. Uh, you know, get it because there's some of it I've. I haven't talked to nobody about it. just get it off my chest, off my back, you know. And what you said right back to, you know, help to help uh, me understand certain things about this, you know. But, but one thing I do, like, I'm focusing on healing, you know, focusing on moving forward. Um, I got to get rid of these, you know, toxic uh, habits, you know, that's still lingering around. But, yeah, I know I'm, I'm actually happy because I know you're here and the people are here to help. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sorry. That really, really warmed my heart. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah, yeah. And we're going to add um, from this week, we're going to change it up a little bit and add a positive section to this. Because I always talk about <laughs> the negative parts of a relationship. And we always go through negative problems. Uh, but yeah, my husband was like, Dude, we need a positive section in these Twitter spaces. So um I am going to add this section and it's actually the most powerful one and it helps you kind of assess where your relationship is at um, and how much room there is to grow to make it better. So um, the most evidence-based thing that we have uh, in science right now, in psychology, that they did 40 years of research um, by literally analyzing um, people in relationships in a lab that had cameras and everything and they just had to be themselves for a whole weekend in this lab and they did 40 years of um, thousands and thousands of couples Um, and it was Gottman's research so they found the magic ratio is one to five so I'm going to reference this um, you know in our Twitter spaces so the magic ratio is one to five and what that means is for every one positive in, uh, for every one negative interaction you have with someone you want to have five positive interactions so kind of to break down a um kind of belief we have in society we believe people in good relationships don't argue and it's only people in bad relationships that argue and that's not true um so that's um definitely shown in the research so just as much as people have negative interactions in um, bad relationships, good relationships also have the same amount of bad interactions. So that's not what separates good couple, uh, good yeah, couples or marriages or anything. What separates them is how many positive interactions they have. So everyone argues you can't get out of arguing um, and having negative interactions, but you can control... Um, reducing how long the duration of arguments are by breaking cycles that you notice are repeating and repeating um, and increasing the positive interactions you have with someone. So, for example, if um, one of you gets super mad and you don't talk to each other for three days, imagine how much negative interaction is built up for you to have to do five times more positive interaction like it just seems like a mountain that's you know very hard to do that's why um i want to be able to get like as many relationships as i can to be able to resolve um arguments with ideally within 24 hours ideally before you go to bed and it doesn't mean like everything's magically okay when you go to sleep but it's in a place where it's good enough where you feel safe enough with each other um 
to, you know, say I love you to each other and go to bed and, you know, kiss each other and go to bed and uh, maybe resolve the rest tomorrow or, you know, just get enough closure to get to that because then you can build on all these positive interactions so much more. And when I say positive interactions, they can be something as simple as looking into someone's eyes and smiling, holding someone's hand, um, making them laugh a little bit. They're, they're always really usually very simple things. Um, so I wanted to share five positive things that um, I do <laughs> uh, that help our ratio be more positive. So um, one of the things that, um, I do, actually, I think my husband started this one, but every time he comes home or like I come home, like we always say my babes is home and like gesture with hands if you can imagine that like my hands go up and I go my babes is home and like if we don't get a my babes is home when we walk through the door it's like something's not okay like we we're like but where is my my babes is home like and he has to answer or I have to answer why I didn't do that um so that's something to just keep those positive interactions flowing another one is I love you whenever we say goodbye um you know we you know we have a special sound that we do which is like it's a bit embarrassing but it's like and like we go I love you and then we hang up the phone or like um yeah we just use that sound sometimes so that's something that we do so that's not even a a word or anything but it's a positive interaction um or you know if I do something bad um that you know he's like oh why did you do that or like I don't know, something that I've upset him and it's not like the most serious thing in the world. I'll, I'll, cause he really likes singing. I'll say something like, I'll sing the song. I'd be like, I'm sorry, I'm bad. I'm sorry, you're blue. I'm sorry for all the things I did to you and I can't take it back. And I'm like a really bad singer and he's a good singer. But I would be like, I'll just start. I'll just say, I'm sorry, I'm bad. And then like, he'll know what I'm saying. And he'll laugh. And that little laugh really adds to making things um, in our relationship a more positive magic ratio um, and really makes him feel heard that I understand, you know, I made him feel bad, but it's not that serious, but like I'm acknowledging it. Um, another thing, um, you know, that my husband did for me is, you know, sometimes I would feel like when I'm telling him about my day, like he wants to go do the next thing he wants to do. And it's like hard for him to listen to all the things I want to say. Um, but I think like a, a few times, like when I'm like sharing about something, like he would just come sit next to me, hold my hands and look into my eyes and smile at me. It was just it's a bit it was a bit a lot, but I just felt so hurt. Like and then he's like nodding at me to keep going. And it's um yeah I'm just like oh my gosh that's so much attention like I, I appreciate that it's just very confronting but nice um so that's something that he recently um uh started doing to to increase our positive interactions in our marriage so those are my five uh, I don't know if anyone um has any positive interactions that um, they do in relationships or would do or anything they want to share. If anyone wants to share, I'll just give you guys a moment to raise your hand or unmute. All good, all good. It's something to think about. So I don't know, is that your hand, Koala? Invite to speak, I don't know. Okay, just... In case it is. Ah, speaker, speaker, koala, go for Good it. evening. How are we? Good, good. So happy to see you. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So, what we like to do, um, um, so you know how you make that, that, that little like kissy sound? We do the same thing. Oh, no way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, so one of the things that I always do um, when I get home from work, my wife will either be studying or watching her murder shows. And I go up to her and we always give each other three kisses. Mwah, 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 and the hug. Always. 
It doesn't matter if we're mad at each other. It doesn't matter if we want to strangle each other, set each other on fire, or smother each other with a pillow. We always, always do that. And um, what I like to do, you know, nights or days when she least expects it, I always will bring her the coffee and I will bring her a Boston cream donut because it's like a favorite donut. And, you know, um, I always hype her up too whenever she um, tells me like about like a test that she has at uh, for school. Um, or one of she tells me like what grade she got, like I overhype it. Like I make sure that she knows that I'm proud of her. Just because, you know, it's you know really stressful for her and she's trying to go for her RN and you know, like even when she like stresses out, I always say something positive. Like even if she bombs it, I still say that she's still the smartest person in that room because you know she looks more at the technical aspects of things instead of just, you know, putting her finger in the air, aiming where the wind is going, and then picking an answer. Um, I will always kiss her uh, three times and hug her before I leave work. And during the weekends, when it's really cold out here, I'm usually up before everybody in the house for some reason. I don't know why. But she works from home, so I always turn on her space heater and sometimes, if I remember, I will make her her tea, so that way she doesn't have to do any of that. Wow, way to set the stage, Koala. But absolutely, absolutely. You're doing a lot of things to help increase the positive ratio in your relationship. I'm very, very proud of you. Um, definitely uh, great things. And, you know, I've learned a bunch of things from you. Um, you know, and these things help give us ideas on, you know, what we can do to just increase this ratio as much as we can um, to be positive. So I appreciate you sharing. Those were so many amazing things. And you just thought of them all off the top of your head, which is amazing. Um, but on a normal basis, you know, it's something that, um, that I've accustomed myself to. And we always try to not go to bed angry at each other, but you know, sometimes that happens, but you know. Of course, of course. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Does anyone else want to share anything positive that they do for their any of their relationships? Sounds good. Sounds good. Appreciate the hearts. Appreciate the hearts. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. So that wraps up today's session on validation being the key point for today and practicing that when someone confronts us with something that they're upset about. Um, my go-to phrase is I hear you. I really try and say that first before I say anything else. Um, even if I'm really triggered, it's just like they're upset about something and obviously I care about the person. So I'm going to say, I hear you or that's valid that you feel that way um, and then go from there um, to, to try and figuring this out to break those um, really stuck in habits that we want to change to just increase our ratio and reduce uh, the length of these arguments. So thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate you guys. And same time uh, next week, I'm going to post the um, Twitter space for um, next week right now. So if you guys want to um, set your reminders, that's going to be available immediately. And have an amazing week. And I wish you guys all um, the best relationships. And I'm here if you need anything. Thank you, guys. Have a great week. Bye.